what is a mindset what is the right mindset of a millionaire first of all you need to be good at what you do you need to be reliable yeah and you need to be consistent some people talk about money saying it's a, money is evil don't chase money well actually that's not right money solves problems i respect what you're saying yeah but i disagree what do you think is a billionaire mindset now yeah i can only think <laughs> <laughs> time is the most in single most important factor that ever can be maybe we have some amount of freedom but maybe not all the freedom that we want so what is a mindset or how do you become a trillionaire from a billionaire i would like to welcome all of you today to my channel and uh, we've been always talking about predictions talking about what is the market like and we all know that the market has been pretty good in dubai so far but today i have a very very different um angle to the whole show and we have a dear friend of mine jatin on the show today and i would like to talk about you know life goals and in general how to balance your life and we debate about these things a lot so we just thought that why not bring it to everybody in the channel and uh, to my audience so jatin welcome thank you so much for giving your time and uh, i would like to begin with asking you what do you think is the real goal that we are chasing what are we what are we looking forward to in your opinion what should be your goal what should be your life till when will you chase what you're chasing you're a successful businessman and i would like to know from you and learn from myself and everybody else that is watching this uh, channel your take right well firstly thank you ash for having me in the show and uh, we've known each other for 10 12 years now we've seen each other grow uh, in our business and also as as a person as people we've grown from uh, we we've seen a lot of good and bad times of course the market Absolutely. is amazing right now um but my take is obviously it's a personal take and um with all due respect everybody has their own take my take is fairly simple in 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 the way i run my business or actually run my life or live my life i the most important thing for me and it always has been is freedom running my own business gives me a lot of freedom right so let's like i don't have to be somewhere at 9 am in the morning at a job that i don't like reporting to a boss i don't want to report to and be sitting in a place all day long uh 9 to 6 part of that massive rat race i wanted to get away from that and that was one big motivation for me to start my company now when i started my company obviously the goals keep changing the goals keep moving right yeah. we we started off with x amount of revenue we've grown that now it will be something else something else it's never going to end so you need to draw your own enough you need to put a stop and say well look i am going to grow at whatever speed uh, i am going to um, have my company targets increased by x amount of percentage every year i'm not saying i'm not ambitious but i am happy with a little less growth and in return i'm getting some more free time you see we are friends because we share similar values i have a tattoo which says freedom but it's kind of faded uh, yeah it's kind of faded i need to i tried it twice by the way right. this is the wrong place to get it at but um, i mean i wanted to get it here because that's what you use a lot while you are compromising it right yeah you you're, you're yeah, doing yeah, something yeah, and then you, it's right in your face but anyway that's that's for another time you know i have i have a very interesting question to ask right so this is you said freedom money gets you freedom but people justify that you know what i want to work hard right now so that i can get freedom later and this is how where you are right now yeah. where i am maybe we have some amount of freedom but maybe not all the freedom that we want because we are still building to the freedom that we want and and this is where i question myself and i here by question you yeah. that how do you know when is the time to stop right 
So look, um, it's a fair question, but I, I don't think I'm working for complete freedom. I'm just, when I say freedom, what I actually mean is going back to what I just said, is I don't want to get up at six in the morning. You're already there, my friend. You already know, you, you, nobody's questioning, nobody's calling you and saying, uh, Jatin, where are you? Please but report to work. That's exactly what freedom is. So you have it. That, that, so I don't want to reach a point where I'm 65 or when people are chasing that, you know, they'll, they'll work hard now, make so much money to gain complete freedom. That's not what I'm looking for. I want to keep running businesses. I want to be creative in what I do. I want to create some amazing uh, properties, amazing businesses, uh, but I don't want to stop working. So I think that there is a little bit of a, um, a gray area here when I talk, when I say freedom, it doesn't mean I want to stop working. I want to work in my own terms. So you are there. Exactly. I so am. this is what I'm saying. Yeah. We are there. Yeah. Now let's get past the freedom because I believe that you have the freedom. Yeah. I have the freedom and we are lucky and we are grateful. So we have freedom. But now if I tell you my, 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 my thinking is that we have now money is sort of a magnifying glass. Uh, to a point it is a need. Uh, it's a problem solver depending on what problems are you trying to solve. Yeah. If you're trying to solve a problem of what are you going to eat, what are you going to, where are you going to stay, then that money provides you the solution to what you're going to eat and yeah. what you're going to say. I mean, today's world, today's means, this is how the society is built. Um, when you have more than that, and then you have, you go further in your journey with money, then you look, you should, and you do look at problems around you. Mm -hmm. your immediate fam family and friends and how your money can elevate them and help them, you know, without giving it out. I, I don't mean giving it out. Yeah. But, you know, we all know that we look for means of, of uh, helping our friends and immediate family members with the, that next level of money. And the third level of money is helping the society around you, the community, whatever you identify with. Uh, then people go on to help their countries and the world. And then if you get to the level of, you know, the top 10 guys in the world, then you want to world solve world, world problems problem. and then maybe universe problems. So there is always some problem to be solved and money is a means to the problem. Yeah. So at what point do you say, you know what, this next problem that I really see very up close right now, the next problem, I know my family needs money. I have enough for myself, but I cannot help them because... I'm going to stop making money right now and live my life. Yeah. I know I've helped my family, but society needs money. Yeah. And I'm going to stop myself short now. And so this is what I see talking to a lot of people. Yeah. This is where they keep going. And I feel it's fine. Yeah. But you need to create a balance within it. Yeah. So that you do not um, lose sight of your real goals which is your freedom yeah. and still chase the next level of freedom. Yeah, well, balance I don't is know important. If it means. Yeah, the balance is important. But again, if you're, if you're looking to solve problems beyond you, which, which, which is fair, looking at your immediate family, your people who work for you, employees, your friends, uh, then society, the world, the universe, so on and so forth. One th th thing is 100% sure, you're going to trade all your time off for it because it's impossible to solve problems of that level without really trading your time. You are going to be busy. So you have to know with clarity what you want out of life. That is the first step in making these decisions. There are people we both know who are completely driven by work. They would work 18 hours a day, probably not take holidays to a place where their mobile network won't work. This is what drives them, fair enough. And these are the people who would give all their time off, trade all their time, energy for solving problems because that's sort of also an addiction. They want to get on from one problem to another, make life better for them and for everyone around. And the byproduct of all this is they make money by, by solving is, problems. They start getting yeah. satisfied with it. Satisfied. And, and money is a byproduct. My, money is a byproduct. But again, as I said, everyone defines their own time and what they want to do with it. 
right? Absolutely. For me, if I'm solving my money problems and the money problems of people close to me, including the people who work for me, I think I've done my bit. And then, you know, this 70, 80 years that I have on the planet, I want to utilize it in my own way. At this point, I don't think, to be very honest, ready to solve worldly problems. But I'm not going to come in and create problems for the world. But in my own way, in my own subtle way, the way I run my company, if I can do something to help the world solve a problem in my little way, I will do that. But I've defined my enough, my goals. Once I know I'm achieving that, I'm ready to take a step back, not move into the next problem immediately because that's again an addiction. But the world we live in, we cannot completely disassociate us with problems because then you can probably become a monk, right? Because you need money. Correct. You need money. And, and, and uh, it's, it's, it's an evil. Some people talk about money saying it's a, money is evil. Don't chase money. Well, actually, that's not right. Money solves oh. problems. 100%. Yeah. So you chase your money, get into a phase of life when you're where your money is solving your money problems. And then you decide whether you want to chase more money, more targets, or you want to take a step back, grow at a length, grow at a level, but at the same time, do things that you love to do because your time is limited. So I agree, but kind of disagree because I think there are two paths. Mm -hmm. <coughs> one is a path of self-happiness and freedom, as you say. And one is a path which is to solve worldly problems for yourself and for others. As you rightly said, if you want to be really happy and independent and free, monks are a good example. Yeah. You don't really need so much of money. There is... You know, you're going to be happy. We all know, you know, I know that they can live a very blissful life with, you know, contentment and satisfaction in what they have. And they're pursuing a very stable mindset and they're living a happy life. So if you wanted to achieve happiness for yourself only, then you really don't need to make money as, as, as much. But what, what has happened is, that you have a family and you're looking out for others. And then you are saying right now that you will draw a boundary to how much, yeah. you know, how much people you look after and how much you look after. But I have a feeling that this gets a very difficult decision to make. Yeah. And, 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 you know, and, and your society increases and your immediate people you care about. It's human nature to solve the immediate problem. And the moment that problem is gone, we want to solve the next problem. Yeah, because we are trained that way. So a lot of things have to be unlearned if you actually want so, to. Sorry to cut you, but so then the thing is, if you do, if you want to go against that, the other way and the other path is to be a monk mm -hmm. and not care about anything. And you're going to be a happy person. No, see, even, even when you become a monk, you're doing it for your own happiness. 100%. You are doing things for your happiness because what you do for the world or the society or others makes you feel a certain way, which is gives you a certain amount of gratitude yeah. and happiness and you're doing it for yourself. Yeah. So and that's answer, absolutely fine. Yeah. So to answer your question, you everyone has a choice. They can become a monk, right? Yeah. I could have become a monk, but I, I want to live in a materialistic modern world solve my money problems, have enough money to live a good life, take care of me, myself, my family, close people, close-knit people. But at the same time, I'm not looking to fly a private jet on my next travel. No, I agree with that. Yeah. But my argument is, mm -hmm. my argument is that the moment you will have enough money for yourself yeah. and your immediate family, you will feel the need. It doesn't feel it right now, yeah. maybe because your target and your goals are pretty defined. But the moment you've decided that, your human nature is going to tell you that now you will, you will be able to see the society problems. Of course. Right? Let's say you found a business and that business is making money. And that business making money has taken care of yourself and, and it's still making money yeah. because it's a machinery right yeah. it's not going to stop the money is still going to come in because you've you've created something and that money then will bring you 
to think about the society. Okay, Maybe no. this is my. Yes. You so know, we we we. You will come to that. Uh, you will come to that vision when you climb that mountain. Yeah. I, I I get you. I get what you're saying. But everybody in their own journey at this point also. For example, let's let's take me for example. I could do probably eight or ten more projects. Be a little bit more busy. Make that much little bit more money. Yeah. But I'm not. I'm choosing okay. not to. So that's a different point. You you have decided to live alongside, to to have your your own freedom coexisting with your pursuit of. Um, prosperity. That's right. So this is what you now yeah. you know what you're now saying is that you are you are creating a balance of how much you work, how much you have time for yourself, and how much you spend time in pursuit of money. Yeah. Now that can stay forever. Yeah. And right? it's it's a lot it's a lot of training to your of mind course. that you have to do. Of course. Because otherwise you're endlessly chasing. This is the point. Yes. You're endlessly chasing one target after the other, one problem after the other, which is fair if you're driven by it. I, as a person, am not driven by it. I understand it. And uh, I, I define my enough. Yeah, absolutely. It's still far off, but but I'm, I'm in a very happy zone. And this happiness is a skill that I've learned to achieve yeah, it's by defining this yeah, enough. Yeah, it's a skill. And you have to, def if you acquire that skill, you're going to be happy right now. That, yeah. And you will not chase the happiness. I that's, mean, that's... this is, see, we are talking about it, but we both have actually, if you look at yeah. it, we have the same yeah, exactly. uh, mindset. And uh, this is this is something that that I I feel a lot of people sometimes, and I feel very unfortunate for them because doesn't matter how much money you have if you do not if you do not create this balance yeah then you would there's a finite life and you will not be able to get to that point which gives you like okay now this is enough yeah and now you can enjoy yeah right yeah so you know let's take warren buffet for example he's i think 90 he's in his 90s and he's obviously a billionaire multifolds and still chasing money <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I think he's one of the most uh, stressless, stress-free persons on the planet. Right. But if you today go to him and tell him that trade off your age with him, but you start from zero, what do you think he will say? He will trade it. He will trade it because he doesn't have much, I mean, right. yeah, humans, we, right? He's lucky to be uh, in yeah. that age that he is. So time is the most single most important factor that ever can be. Right, 100%. you can buy a few more years of your life because of new science, technology, heart transplants, liver transplants. But end of the day, you're still going to live X amount of years, and that's it. Right. So time for me is non-negotiable for anybody in the world. Nobody. I give my time only when I'm hundred percent committed that I want to give my time. And that's I would rather sit and read a book and not spend uh, my time visiting people I don't want to visit. So basically, we have to understand that how valuable this time is. <laughs> so let me ask you one question on, on this on this note. Sure. You're running a few companies, you're a, you're a millionaire. Tell us about what is a mindset? What is the right mindset of a millionaire? Or what kind of mindset you need to develop to actually become a millionaire? So this is something that I really want to um, differentiate here. You, everybody, you know, you ask anybody, you ask, you tap on the shoulder of somebody who, anybody on the street, and ask them if they want to be a millionaire. And I do not think that you'll get an answer that no, I don't want to be, mm. right? So mm. I think let's establish the fact that everybody wants to be a millionaire. Unless you want to become a monk. <laughs> Unless you want to become a monk, right? Yeah. No, we are talking about this path, right? I, now okay, we, we right. just established that <laughs> one path is not yeah. what we are pursuing. But yeah. in this path, everybody wants to be. True. So wanting to be a billionaire is not the mindset. Yeah. Every coaching, every telling, every every mindset book is telling you, you have to pursue, you have to tell yourself, you want to be a millionaire and you will be a millionaire. Think you want to be a millionaire and you will be. I disagree. Okay, I think becoming a millionaire is an absolute byproduct of something completely 
which has nothing to do with money. Mm -hmm. And the mindset is as follows, in my humble opinion. The mindset is of passion to solve a problem. Okay? And some people have passion to solve a problem long enough, hard enough, that they end up solving that problem come what may. And that problem solving has a reward mm -hmm. in this world. And this is this reward is money. So when you go to a job, you get paid for your hours. You cannot become a multi-millionaire. Millionaire is a not the right word these days because millionaire uh, inflation accounted millionaire is not really something hmm. very big. But let's say multi-millionaire. Let's say 20 million, 40 million, 50 million starts to be a multi-millionaire. So that mindset is not of a nine to six mm -hmm. job mindset. We are talking about the mindset which takes you out of that mindset, yeah. right? Of nine to six. And that is not trading your time with money. So if you do not trade your time with money, then what do you trade to get money is a solution. And if you have a solution for a problem, people will give you the reward in form of money. Right. Right. And this you can, this is a generic definition of how your mindset is. And if you look at examples around you, right, you, I'm sure you have friends who have uh, become multimillionaires in the last few years in front of your eyes. And I think they solved something. Mm -hmm. And it could be something as simple as something which is scarce. Uh, somebody who's trustable has gained a lot of trust in the society yeah. and they people go to him. He's an amazing lawyer and people trust him to be the best is a problem solved. Yeah. There are 200 lawyers, but he solved a problem which people were like, I want trusted lawyer who I can trust that is going to do good or whatever, doctor, anybody, yeah. professionals yeah. can be multimillionaires. Somebody who solved a problem. Yeah. Right. So I think two things only. You need to solve a problem and you need to do it in a way that people want to. You can monetize it, right. which is people want to pay you for it. Right. Right. So that's that's a great insight. And uh, I agree that nobody becomes rich by renting out their time. And uh, you need to make money when you're sleeping uh, passively through various sources, various channels to. So my take on how a millionaire mindset should be uh, it goes a little way back is when you, you need to be you need to get yourself skilled right yeah. in a particular say for example if as you mentioned a lawyer yeah. you need to be comp you need to be the best at what you're doing absolutely. obviously absolutely. that's a given absolutely right second is over a period of time you create something called as accountability which is what you just mentioned that Trust. People will say this guy is good. Yes. He'll fight your case in the right way with all ethics, right? So the accountability comes in. So you're putting your name on the line. Correct. Your name is on stake. Skills and accountability coming together can be lethal. Correct. Right? And this can this can earn you the credits which society gives you in form of money right. for years and years and years because yeah. they found someone who they can rely on. So accountability is nothing but skills applied with, uh, with a good value system yeah. over a consistent period of time That's right. is accountability. That's right. Right? That's so, right. first of all, you need to be good at what you do. You need to be reliable. Yeah. And you need to be consistent. Exactly. And that's when people recognize your consistency, your reliability and your skill set. Yeah. And that's what you, they pay you for. Absolutely. Great. So, we've identified a few uh, <laughs> important mindsets of a millionaire. Let me ask you, and I'm, I'm far away from uh, being a billionaire, but Wait, what do you think is a billionaire mindset now and to get from millionaire to billionaire? Yeah, I can only think. <laughs> 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 but I, I have a feeling, I can imagine, okay? People who become billionaires, they imagine, this is my, 
this is my imagination i i don't know if this is uh, how it is but i feel that people who become billionaires what they did is they imagine how the world will be in 5 years from now right and they figured it out how to do it in 3 years instead of 5 right they solved the problem of the future in nearer future right so if you look at uh microsoft uh people thought that you know one day in next 6 years we are going to have smaller computers that we can use at home and bill gates did it in 3 right if you look at elon musk people said in next 15 years we are going to have electric cars and he did it in 5 yeah right so i think if you or me or anybody could imagine what the world will be like in 5 years or 10 years and did it earlier you yeah. can be a billionaire, billionaire. this right. is That's this is right so you cannot solve solve immediate problems you have to solve future, future problems. problems yeah and you have to solve them earlier yeah. than other people think they will be solved in right so a billionaire mindset is basically having a foresight of the future a problem that they now understand that the society may face or is currently facing and then finding a solution to that leveraging earlier than everybody else earlier than anyone else that's a <laughs> foresight is, part this is yeah and then no the foresight is to get the problem yeah and then to find a solution as well to find the solution before before so a lot anyone of people else, have yeah. foresight so you know what i don't think that there is a lot of this you know we are mm-hmm. i don't know how many 7 or 8 billion people yeah. on this planet i think there is fairly enough number of people who can imagine or variations of it of what people will face in next 5 years. Yeah. But I think the one who solves it the fastest becomes yeah, the billionaire. So finding a problem, solving the problem faster than anyone else. Exactly. And then also scaling it at a global scale. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you if you can't scale it, you won't be a billionaire. Correct. Right. Right. So that's a that's an interesting take. I think that I completely agree with that. So Yeah, I mean, this is This is do, do you, this do is you, how, do you have a problem right now in your uh, mind that the so world is going okay So you see this is a, I I I kind of had a feeling that you were going to ask me that <laughs> <laughs> So I think what I'm going to do is obviously I don't know for certain that if I can solve any uh, future problem earlier than anybody else nobody can guarantee that So what I'm going to do is now now I'm joining the whole thing that we said First I'm going to buy myself the time so that i don't have to live for anything that i immediately need or for my lifetime i'm going to go away and uh, grow some trees and live in a farm and live my chill life and uh, while doing that i'm going to think of the problems and maybe if a guava falls on my head <laughs> you know i'm going to get some solution Yeah. and i'll put my resources behind it and see what happens i, I see you're a big fan of newton <laughs> <laughs> no i changed it to guava <laughs> it's very different right it was apple for newton <laughs> and apple is a big brand now yeah, so well. maybe guava can be a bigger <laughs> brand later but yeah i like the, I like the sound of guava <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah who knows yeah. but there is no certain nobody who is a billionaire set out to be a billionaire right what they set out to do is exactly that solve problem making a that make an attempt to solve a future problem yeah and because they became successful and they could scale it as you said uh they got the reward, the reward. in form of the enormous amount of wealth uh that came alongside it. fair enough i take your point 100% so agree so it's a it's a human desire yeah. to solve problems it's my need to solve problems currently i'm solving smaller problems uh the day i have the ability and the time and the resources to solve bigger problems i'll make an attempt i'm sure you will do too if you had the the same resources and the same time and um, if somebody is successful um, if i am successful maybe but i don't need to be i don't need to be a billionaire Mm. Nobody needs to be a billionaire. Yeah. No one. Yeah. 
but that's just how it's a it desire, happens. It's a desire, it's a desire to, desire to solve, solve the problem. problem. Yeah. Yes. Right. So, so this has been such a fantastic chat, right? Um, I just want to bounce one question off you. Short 30 seconds, one minute answer. We've spoken about millionaire. We've spoken about billionaire. Let's talk about trillionaire. We're soon going to see probably yeah, some we'll trillionaires have one coming soon. along. So what is a mindset or how do you become a trillionaire from a billionaire? Um, yeah, I'm going to tell you the answer because I know everything. How <laughs> <laughs> big a trillionaire. But I'll tell you something. As I said, millionaire solves immediate problems in their society. Yeah. Billionaire solves a five-year-ahead problem first yeah. before anybody else solves. Yeah. I think trillionaire, the trillionaire will be the person who is looking at five years ahead what the world thinks the problem is going to be and change the way the world thinks by creating something which will change the trajectory of the world. Right. So, you don't solve anymore the problem of the future. You actually change the way people think. Right. You solve a problem which doesn't exist in people's mind is what I think will be the next <laughs> one. Or, so, or probably, probably make your billions, let it compound. Let ah, it yeah. compound to make trillions. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Jatin, somebody who's going to yeah. make billions is not going to put in the bank and say, okay, now I'm going to in, yeah, compounding interest. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. Yeah. Uh, tri- no, by, by inflation, people will become trillionaires. But yeah. I'm not talking about that. Yeah. I'm talking about... No, I, I get your point. Yeah, I'm right. talking about somebody will change the way uh, the humanity is thinking. Mm-hmm. That's the opportunity and lying there for, you know. And I think all the billionaires in the world are thinking about that right, right now, right. right? So this is this is where we will get our next Sure. Thanks. Somebody who's able to do, do that. Thanks for, yeah, it's a pretty cool answer, yeah. But listen, one thing that now we have talked about millionaire, billionaire and trillionaire. Right. Uh, you know, our audience is, is watching this and I'm sure they are taking a few bits and pieces out of this conversation. There are, entrepreneurs want to, who want to be entrepreneurs and college students and people who who are who are in jobs which you know i was in jobs you were in job and we both have kind of come over mm-hmm. uh, that nine to six rat race and this is this is uh, if somebody is here watching wants to be an entrepreneur wants right. to get to the next level of life and get freedom and right you know, get control of their life financially. Yeah. What is, what is those right. three things that you would say that this is the key? Right. So I think for for all the people who are watching us and uh, wants to make it big in life, um, the three things that I would suggest would be the first one is read. That one single thing that changed my life and my mindset. You know, you learn a lot in school. Um, you, you study a lot of things in school, but the real learning happens on job or through books. Read books, read all the time, and then implement those changes. Okay. That's, that's one. Second for me is, you know, we are living in a world where there is a lot of leverage available everywhere. You know, I mean, um, you can leverage your audience through one of the social media platforms. Consistently post about something and you become an expert at that, right? Third thing is you will never be able to make immense wealth by renting out your time, which we just discussed. So even if you're working somewhere, if you're on a job right now and circumstances are such that you can't leave and start your own company at this point, have some other sources of income. Invest your money in stocks or equity or whatever else that's available around you. And through these three things, it's a great start. I'm going to end by quoting Naval, which says that a calm mind and a fit body and a house full of love, all of this has to be earned. So health is top, top, top. This is my fourth one. Sorry, I'm going over three. But yeah, that's that's for me. Our... You can take a fifth one if you like. <laughs> no. I don't mind. I, 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 mean... I can give you 10 interesting <laughs> takes, but these are my three or four, four. And take risks. Just go all out. I mean, you know, what are the downsides? 
not not much but if you if you do well your upside is unlimited so you take yes. the risk wonderful it's been what about what about you let's let's conclude the show with what are you so, your three takeaways you know there are there, there's never three right there's yeah. always so many things that you want to say but i'm going to try and keep something very simplistic and easy to remember yeah find a mentor that you can follow become a mentor who people can follow and help people progress in their life so they can be followed right and if you kind of i think for me like you said read i think for me to find somebody who i can learn from in real life and use them as a bouncing board and uh, check my ethos my virtues my values and keep my um keep my desires in check not let them break my values those kind of things right. come from following a mentor and then i try to be, to influence people by becoming a mentor and then the next level is to create people who can uh who can create the same value in other people right so it's it's a chain so chain so the moment you make relieve yourself from one <clears throat> obligation you automatically elevate yourself so my constant uh, pursuit is to empower people in my life so that that automatically elevates me right it's been pleasure jatin and i think we have to do this again yes i'm <laughs> right? i'm already looking forward to the next one <laughs> <laughs> uh, i don't know what we will talk about we have talked yeah. about so many this, things today but yeah. this this always such a pleasure to get your opinion and i learn a lot whenever i talk to you it's been a pleasure so it's yeah. been thank a you pleasure. so much for your time and thank you so much thank you so much right